Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, I welcome you all to the 13th lecture of this course. The 13th lecture is on nanotechnology in tissue engineering. So in this lecture, we are going to learn what is tissue engineering and why we need tissue engineering and what are the tools required for tissue engineering and also we are going to learn what are the applications of nanotechnology in tissue engineering. So let us see the definition of tissue engineering. So tissue engineering is an interdisciplinary field that applies the principles of engineering and life science towards the development of biological substitutes that restore, maintain or improve the tissue function. So here why we need tissue engineering to replace the diseased or damaged tissue, okay. Because the donor tissues and organs are in short in supply, we do not have sufficient donors for replacing the damaged tissues or organs and also if we take the organs from a different person or different animal, our immune system will reject it. So to minimize the immune system response we can use our own cells and we can engineer the man-made tissues, okay. So here tissue engineering is an approach to treat patients who need a new organ or tissue with the man-made organ or tissues. So here the tissues are engineered using a combination of patient's own cell and polymer scaffold. So here we are going to take the patient's own cell and we are going to add the cells on the polymeric scaffold and we are going to uh, grow the tissue in the lab condition and we are going to implant it into the patient. So here the polymeric scaf scaffold will mimic the natural ECM that is extracellular matrix, okay. So which brings cells together and control the tissue structure and regulate the function of the cells, okay. So here the scaffold act like a support and it will allow the cells to grow, okay. It will provide a support like an extracellular matrix ECM and also it allows the nutrients to permeate through the porous structure of the extracellular matrix. So this is the overview of tissue engineering. So the first step is we are going to take the cells from the patient's body and we are going to cells in the lab condition and once we grow the cells, sufficient number of cells, then we can seed the cells on the three dimensional scaffold. So then the cells grow on the three dimensional scaffold and we can implant the same cells into the repair or damaged site, okay. So we are re-implanting these engineered tissue to the damaged site. So this is the overview of tissue engineering and why we need three dimensional, okay. So in case of two dimensional that won't mimic your body condition, okay. So inside our body we have all the organs are in three dimensional. So we need a three dimensional scaffold, so which mimic like your in vivo condition and also it act like a support to grow the cells and which could be useful for making a artificial tissues or organ to replace the damaged tissue or organ. So the tools required for tissuing is cells scaffold and cell signaling. The first thing is cells, so that is the living part of tissue, okay. So that produces a protein or and provides functions of cells, okay. And next one is scaffold, so this provides the structural support and shape to construct and uh, it should be usually biodegradable and biocompatible. Biocompatible means it should be compatible to the biological system and biodegradable means if it degrades inside the system, it should not induce any immune response or toxic effects. And third one is cell signaling. So the cell signaling, it may be like a growth factors or hormones, okay. So that is going to tell the cell it has to differentiate or not, what kind of cells it has to differentiate, okay. So these are the three things required for your tissue engineering. The first one is a cell source. It can be your embryonic stem cells or it can be your adult stem cells, okay. And uh, next one is your extracellular matrix, that is your support or scaffold. It can be a metal, ceramics, synthetic polymers and natural polymers. So it depends on the tissue you want to grow or depends on the organ you want to grow, you have to select your scaffold. It can be metal for some of the bone replacement and it can be synthetic polymer and natural polymer. Depends on the application, you have to select the ECM, extracellular matrix. And third one is signals or growth factors. So this growth factors, it is going to decide what kind of cells it is going to differentiate, okay. And also some of the tissues, we have to apply mechanical force. This mechanical force also plays a major role in differentiating the cells. So let us see one by one. So what is a stem cell, okay. 
so it is a cell which has the ability to divide for indefinite periods and uh, it can be like often throughout the life of the organism okay so stem cell is like your uh, in a simple term it can assume like it's a seed so from the seed you will get the plant from plant you will get the flower again you will get the fruit and seed okay so similarly the stem cells it can differentiate into any kind of cells okay so under the right condition or given the right signals the stem cells can given rise to many different types of cells okay so if you are inducing the stem cells with the suitable growth factors and uh, it will convert into liver cells or it can be converted into kidney cells okay so that is called as differentiation so the stem cells again divided into three types totipotent pluripotent and unipotent so totipotent is embryonic stem cells from embryonic stem cells we can get any kind of cells and multipotent cells example is mesenchymal stem cells from here you can get multiple types of cells and unipotent is you can get only single type of cell you can see here the totipotent is a embryonic stem cell you can get any kind of cells and pluripotents or multipotent you can get multiple types of cells and uh, unipotent is your uh, uh, adult liver cell example okay so you can get the liver stem cell from the liver stem cell you will get the liver cells like hepatocyte cells so it is only one type of cells we can get it from the unipotent cells so we can use the stem cells and depends on the growth factors okay or the hormones whatever you add the cells will differentiate the stem cells will differentiate into liver cells or it can differentiate into kidney cells so next one is scaffold so the cells are often implanted or seeded on into a artificial structure capable of supporting three dimensional tissue formation okay so these structures typically called as scaffold so the scaffold should serve at least one of the following purposes okay so it should allow the cells to attach okay and it should deliver and retain the cells and biochemical factors and it should enable the diffusion of vital cell nutrients and also it should exert certain mechanical and biological influences to modify the behavior of the cell phase okay so we can have scaffolds in various structures and materials depends on the tissue we want to grow we have to select the suitable scaffold and the scaffold should encourage the cells to grow okay and it should have sufficient porous nature so that it can allow the nutrients to permeate and it should be highly biocompatible and biodegradable it should not harm the patient so let us see the steps in the tissue engineering so first thing is you have to select the suitable cell source then you have to select the suitable scaffold then you have to add the cells on the scaffold and grow it okay so once the cell is ready then you have to transplant to the human body okay so this is a biocompatible scaffold you can add the human cells and the cells multiply on the scaffold and you can add the growth factors or matrix proteins okay so then cells secrete growth factors and human matrix proteins and it became complete human tissue so using the well designed scaffolds and optimized cell growth so these are the tissues these were already successfully engineered okay skin bone cartilage these are already successfully engineered but some of the complex organs like liver heart and lung these are still under research okay because it has a complex metabolic function as well as it require multiple types of cells okay so that's why it is very difficult to make artificial liver or artificial heart but still lot of research is going on to develop artificial liver or artificial heart and artificial lungs so let us see the example of skin tissue engineering okay so suppose if we have a wound on your skin you are losing some of the cells on the skin and when the skin contract it forms a scar but when you replace the damaged cells with your uh, uh, scaffold loaded with the skin cells it will regenerate the skin and there won't be any scar formation suppose you are having a damage or wound on your skin okay so you are losing this much amount of cells so what happens is when the skin contract there will be formation of scar so but when you replace this damaged cells with the scaffold there won't be any formation of scar so let us see how to repair the skin so there are two approaches one is in vitro and other one is in vivo in the in vitro you will add the cells and uh, other uh, uh, regulators okay to the tissue bilayer 
and will implant it to the host okay and in in vivo synthesis you will put the scaffold into the host and you add the cells on the host and it will be regenerated in the uh, host okay that is called as in vivo synthesis so let us see the example you can see here so this is a wound grafted with the scaffold and if you have the active scaffold so there is no contraction it is blocking the contraction and new tissue formed in skin there is no scar formation but when you not putting the scaffold what happen is there will be a formation of scar due to contraction of the skin so let us see another example here we can see here schematic of wound model in adult mouse liver so here they are making a wound on the adult liver adult mouse liver and uh, they are replacing with the scaffold loaded with the liver cells and uh, it is healing the wound okay you can see here without uh, scaffold there is no wound healing with the scaffold it is closing the wound so let us see why we need nanotechnology in tissue engineering so you can see here so when we use a micro pore scaffold the cells are not able to attach properly and at the same case in the microfiber scaffold also and but when you use a nanofiber scaffold the each cells it can easily attach to thousands of nanofibers so as you know the size of cell is in the micrometer okay when you use a micro pore scaffold or microfiber scaffold that is not matching with the uh, scale okay but when you use a nanofiber scaffold a single cell can attach to thousands of nanofibers that will exactly mimic like your extracellular matrix ecm okay so the cells on microfiber scaffold have a polarized relationship with one side of the cell attached to the scaffold and the other exposed to physiological media okay so in comparison it is likely that the cells are more naturally constrained by nanofibrous scaffold so the cell is in the micrometer size okay and when you use the micro pore scaffold what happens is some cells are partially binding to the support and some are exposed to the medium when you use the microfiber scaffold again so when you have the microfiber the cells are growing on the axis of the fiber okay so again it is not exactly not matching with your ecm so but when you use the nano fiber so here the fiber size is in the range of nanometer and your cell is in the range of micrometer so each cell can bind and attach to thousands of nano fibers so it exactly mimic like your ecm extracellular matrix so that's why we need nano fiber scaffold for tissue engineering application so you can see here this is your extracellular matrix so each tissues or organ we have this kind of extracellular matrix on the top of the matrix all our cells attach and grow and forms a tissue or organ so when you use the nano fiber based scaffold it exactly mimic like your extracellular matrix okay and here you can see here the extracellular fiber matrix it is in the range of 50 to 500 nanometer diameter so the cell size is between 10 to 100 micrometer so the single cell here you can see here, this is a scanning electron microscope picture so the single cell can bind to thousands of nano fibers so the single cell contact thousands of fibers so the transmission of fine signals can be easily achieved so what are the techniques available to achieve nano fibers for tissue engineering first one is self assembly second one is phase separation third one is elder spinning so we will see one by one the self assembly which i already explained in one of the lecture that is protein nanotechnology so we can use the peptides with hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail okay so it can self assemble and form the three dimensional scaffold so when you use the peptide of 16 amino acid or more and with alternating polar and non polar okay it forms a stable beta strands and beta sheets and forms nano fibers with good hydrophobicity and hydrophilicity okay so using the self assembly we can make the three dimensional nano fibrous scaffold and next one is phase separation so this is a process involves dissolving a polymer in a solvent at high temperature followed by a liquid liquid or solid liquid phase separation induced by lowering the solution temperature okay so here we can Uh, have a wide range of geometry dimensions and irregular pore structures 
and it is simpler than the self assembly process. So, let us see phase separation detail. Okay. So, it is a thermally induced phase separation is a technique. Okay. It is mainly useful for generating scaffolds with specific pore size. In this method, the temperature of the polymer solution is adjusted to a point at which a polymer rich and polymer poor phase is generated. Then the solvent is removed and the polymer rich phase solidifies forming a porous solid structure which is then freeze dried. Okay. And nanofibrous scaffolds with varying fiber diameters and pore size can be generated by adjusting the polymer concentration, the type of solvent and the phase separation temperature. By simply adjusting the polymer concentration, type of solvent and phase separation temperature, we can have a various size, porous size nanofibrous scaffold. And here the fibers ranging from 50 to 500 diameter diameter can be easily achieved and which will exactly mimic like your extracellular matrix. So, this is a phase separation. So, the solvent and polymer is mixed and form the solution and with respect to temperature we can separate the phase okay, and you can get the different porous and fibrous scaffold. So, here the drawbacks are it is limited to only several polymers and it is only small production scale. So, you can see here this is a scanning alter microscope picture of nanofibrous scaffold with spherical macro pores. So, the next approach is electro spinning technique. Okay. So, this is a process by which high static voltages are used to produce fibers from a polymer solution. Here we can get micron to nanometer size diameter fibers and fibers have huge surface area to volume ratio. So, how to make nanofibers using electro spinning? Let us see a simple example. It is similar to your cotton candy. So, in cotton candy what is your polymer solution? You will be using the sugar solution. Okay. So, here when you use the sugar solution and spun out through the tiny holes as the fiber spins it is pulled thinner and thinner. Okay. So, you will get this kind of fibrous structure. So, the simple example is cotton candy. The same principle is for your electro spinning setup also. Okay. So, it is a versatile method to produce fibers with diameter in the range of nano and here we will be having a syringe. Okay. It is connected to high voltage power supply. So, when you apply the high voltage between the spinneret and collector, a polymer fluid Okay, slowly pumped out through the spinneret and the droplet is held by its own surface tension okay, until it gets electrostatically charged. So, after a threshold accumulation of charges, this polymer assumes a conical shape. This is called as Taylor cone and the thin stream of fiber eludes the droplet. Then it forms a nano fiber. So, here the electrical field pulls on a droplet of a polymer solution at the tip of the syringe and pulls out smaller liquid fiber and it is pulled thinner, thinner and thinner as it approaches the collection plate. So, here we can easily control the dimension of your nano fiber okay, by simply adjusting the polymer solution viscosity and also the, the distance between the spinneret and collector. Suppose you are having a more distance between your spinneret, needle and collector. So, you will get nano fiber. So, the distance between this spinneret and collector is very important. And if you reduce this distance, you will get micro size fiber. If the collector is moved closer, okay, you will get micro size fiber. And when you move the collector more far away, what happens is you will get the fiber, you won't get the continuous fiber, you will be having a fiber with break. And again this electro spinning available in vertical as well as horizontal and the collector can be static collector or it can be rotated rim collector. So, using the rotating collector and stationary collector, we can have the aligned and random fibers. So, when you use the rotating collector, what happens is it is similar to your thread bundle. Okay. So, all the fibers are rolled into the rotating collector and you will get the aligned fibers. But when you use the stationary collector, what happens is you will get this kind of random fibers. So, when you see under this scanning electron microscope, you will get this kind of beautiful aligned fibers when you use the rotating collector and you get this kind of random fibers when you use the stationary collector. 
and the main advantage of this nanofiber by ultra spinning is it's a simple equipment okay and multiple polymers can be combined at monomer level or fiber level and scaffold level and here we can control the fiber diameter by altering the concentration or viscosity of your polymer and also the fiber length can be unlimited so let us see the uh, overview of this nano scaffold and what are the advantages and disadvantages of each method so self assembly is very difficult to make but it produces a nano fiber scaffold which closely mimic your extracellular matrix but the drawbacks are lack of control and limitation of polymers okay and also only short fibers can be created and low yield but when you use a phase separation it is easier when compared to the self assembly and here we can make the tailorable and mechanical properties with a uh, specific pore size okay and here we can maintain batch to batch consistency but it is limited to lab scale production and also we can use only several type of polymers okay only limitation to particular type of polymers and electro spinning is very easy and it is cost effective okay and we can make a long and continuous fiber and production of align fibers is possible and we can also tailor the mechanical properties size and shape okay and the limitations are some cases we have to use the organic solvents and we don't have any control over the three dimensional pore structure okay so these are the advantages and disadvantages of each method for making nano fibers and whenever you make nano fibers or any nano scaffold the first thing important thing is hydrophilicity of your material when your material is hydrophilic so it will allow the cells to attach and grow nicely okay so how to measure or how to check the hydrophilicity of your material by using contact angle measurements so here we have to rest a small drop of water on a solid surface okay and a tangential outline of the droplet on the solid forms the contact angle so here you'll be adding a drop of water on the nano fiber scaffold so when you add a drop of water and using a contact angle measurement setup we can measure the contact angle okay so if your water droplet is giving this kind of contact angle like less than 90 degree that is your material is hydrophilic okay if you are getting a contact angle more than 90 that means it is hydrophobic if your contact angle is more than 150 it is your material is super hydrophobic okay so using this simple uh, experiment we can understand whether your nano material or nano scaffold is hydrophilic or not so let us see the applications of nano technology in tissue engineering so using nano technology we can make several nano structures nano gratings nano fibers nano pits okay so the living cells are highly sensitive to local nano scale topographic patterns within the extracellular matrix and this cell nano topography interactions will decide the cell morphology and also it can induce the differentiation of your cells if you are adding the same cells on this kind of structures and uh, nano gratings and it can allow the cells to differentiate okay this nano gratings or nano fibers it can also induce a cellular differentiation and also cellular signaling so let us see the example of cardiomyocytes so this is our organ and this is a natural tissue structure cardiomyocytes okay so this is a engineered scaffold here the grooved arrays can promote cardiomyocyte elongation and alignment so we can have this kind of nano structures so when you have this kind of nano structures the extracellular matrix forces cardiomyocytes to couple mechanically and this nano grooved surface can force cell alignment in a same way which mimic the natural tissue structure the next example is epithelial cells okay so here the epithelial cells are polarized and adhere to other cells and when you make the surface okay nano fibers modified with surface molecules so that can promote this kind of natural tissue structure effect okay next example is bone okay so the osteoblast influenced by bone matrix and we can make the hydroxyapatite nano structures and uh, with the porous structure similar to your bone okay so these nano structures it can enhance the osteogenesis that is formation of bone the next example is we can have this kind of scaffold with the magnetic nano particles and it which is carrying the growth factors when you apply the external magnetic field it will release the growth factor according to the external magnetic field okay so when you apply the external magnetic field and according to the growth factors the cells will have different kind of forces mechanical forces so when you expose to this mechanical forces this mechanical forces will induce the gene expression and it leads to expression of various proteins okay so that is called as mechano transduction okay 
and we can also tissue near the neural cells. So, in the nano fibers, we can incorporate the supporting cells and we can also incorporate the growth factor and which will be useful for uh, neural cell tissue engineering. So, let us see how this cartilage cells can be tissue engineered through nanotechnology. So, this articular cartilage is a connective tissue that lines the ends of articulating bones ok. So, that provides a frictional, frictionless motion and also it is protecting the bones of joints. So, we can have this cells and seeded the cells on the scaffold and when you add the bioactive growth factors and suitable environment like we have to give the mechanical force ok, then the nano composite will form the uh, cartilage cells in the artificial scaffold and that could be injectable or it could be implantable into the patient who has the damaged articular cartilage tissue. Okay. So, next one is we can also engineer the bone cells. Here the bone is a specialized form of connective tissue that forms the skeleton of the body. Okay. So, mimicking the bone structure and its properties present an important frontier in the fields of nanotechnology and material science. So, using the with the help of materials and nanotechnology we can engineer the bone. Okay. So, here we can have the synthetic biomaterials made up of hydroxapatite and collagen which mimic like your uh, bone scaffold ok and we can add the uh, bone marrow stem cells and which can be regenerate your bone damaged bone. So, let us see vascular cells tissue engineering through nanotechnology. So, here we can harvest the cells from the patient and grow the cells in the lab condition ok and at the same time you can harvest the arteries from the pig ok and do the decelerationing process it will remove all the cells and we can use that arterial matrices on the top of that you add the cells which we isolated from the human ok that means recelerizing the porcelain matrix with the patient cells and when it is matured and it will grow and it form the functional vascular graft. So, here we are using the arteries from the pig and the cells from the human and we are making the functional vascular graft. So, let the next example is hepatic cells tissue engineering through nanotechnology. With the help of micro nanotechnology we can make the micro nanostructures which mimic like your uh, liver ok and when we add the hepatocyte cells and it will grow like a complete liver. And next one is we can also use it for dental tissue engineering ok. So, here we can take the uh, dental pulp stem cells and add it on the scaffold. Here the scaffold can be uh, collagen or hyaluronic acid ok and once the cells grows on that we can implant into the alveolar bone ok and dental pulp. So, it will regrow the dental tissue. So, the next application is nano devices in tissue engineering. So, here three dimensional free standing nano wire transistor probe for electrical recording. So, this probe is composed of a nano wire this is a nano wire ok and a flexible substrate material and this device is used to penetrate the membrane of living cells and measure the intracellular signals. You can see here this uh, small nano device can penetrate the cells and it can measure the intracellular signals. So, the tissue engineering is not only useful for making the artificial tissues to replace the damaged tissues or damaged organ, it could be also useful for making some edible tissues that is test tube based burger ok. So, here you can see the example the tissues are taken from the animal muscle and the stem cells are extracted from the tissue ok and the muscle cells are grown under the tension to bulk them up and the new muscle fibers are minced and turned into burgers ok. So, this will avoid the slaughterhouse and killing of lot of animals ok. So, we can have a test tube grown burger. So, let us see another example from uh, pig to plate ok. So, this is an article published in nature ok. So, here the researchers are adapting tissue engineering techniques to grow edible meat ok. So, the tissue engineering is not only for making artificial tissues for uh, damaged organ or biomedical application, we can also make the edible meat ok. So, take a small biopsy from the pig and grow the cells and add animal free growth serum to multiply the cells ok and also gives a mechanical force so that it can exactly mimic like your muscle cell ok. Then you can grind up the muscle strips and you can add flavor like iron or vitamins ok. So, that will add flavor to your uh, uh, meat ok and finally, you can cook and eat. That means, this from this example we learnt like uh, the tissue engineering is not only for biomedical application, it can be also useful for uh, growing the edible meat ok. So, as a summary of this lecture, 
okay so in this lecture we have learned what is tissue engineering and why we need tissue engineering and also we have learned what are the tools required for tissue engineering and also we have learned what are the various applications of nanotechnology in tissue engineering i'll end my lecture here i thank you all for listening to this lecture i'll see you in another interesting lecture